Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Road World Football Show, where it is Monday. It could be Tuesday. You're probably listening on Tuesday. We, we're probably recording on Monday, but I'm not allowed to tell you that. I'm joined by Denny Carter, as I always am. But then we're also joined by the Internet's newest viral sensation, Patrick Corain, who took home a large amount of U.S. dollars by taking down something called the BBM3. Um, Patrick Crane, where, you know, all summer, you know, we kind of joked about your sicko obsession with best ball drafts. And we're like, Pat, is it really necessary to be drafting five underdog teams at a time, you know, while we're podcasting, while you're cooking, <laughs> while you're driving, while you're skiing? But it turns out that it was. Um, you got very used to this look. Uh, oh, say that again, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the hard work paid off, and you you took down this contest, and now you got some cash. And it was, we'll start we'll start with a layup. You know, we have you on the you know, you know Jay Leno show tonight with Patrick Cray. Uh, how how you feel? How are we feeling? I do, I do like that the Jay Leno impression was able to, uh, to make an appearance. It's very fitting. Feeling the question? What's the question? How am I feeling? Feeling? Yeah, good? how you feeling? You know, your life has changed. Um, we're now peasants. That's fine. I mean, that's totally fine with me. I I don't care. But uh, yeah, how, how you feeling? How you doing? Does it still feel surreal? Are you kind of off tilt a little bit? You're yeah. on like positive tilt, but weird tilt because it was such a weird NFL week. Um, you, you start. Can you begin to? Yeah, enjoy I mean, it's been week? surreal. The, obviously, the circumstances around uh, me winning were were awful on Monday with the game being stopped, and then. Um, you know, I, it was in first place at that point. And then it was like, was the game going to be resumed? Is DeMar going to be okay? Uh, we just uh, blurbed that he has been released from the hospital. Um, He's flown uh, back to Buffalo. So. Flown back to Buffalo. Been transferred to a, a hospital there. He's walking on a regular diet. So all of that stuff is just tremendously positive. Amazing to see. Um, but yeah, it's, it does feel surreal. And it's like, I'll say like one thing that's kind of nice about being in this industry um, in addition that I got to spend uh, my my working hours and my private hours drafting teams uh, is that like I was, I've actually been able to reach out to people and talk to people who like know what to do now, you know, because it's yeah. like well, there's a lot of logistical stuff now. And, uh, you know, it's like able to talk to uh, Liam Murphy on the phone uh, last week. And, you know, he won this, this tournament last year, but he was also in first place of some DraftKings tournaments at the time as well. And so it was like literally in my shoes in that regard, as well as having been in my shoes uh, potentially if I, you know, if the game wasn't going to be resumed um, in terms of winning it. So that's, that's definitely been very helpful. Uh, not just Liam, but several other people I've been able to talk to as well. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about last week. I mean, like CPAs, financial advisors, they're used to people coming into money, but like very complex, unique circumstances where, you know, the average CPA is like, what the hell is best what's ball a, what's uh, a best they, ball yeah <laughs> delete the email because well, for some reason you emailed them <laughs> uh i i did want to ask crane real quick uh have you had a family member say something about taxes yet <laughs> because um, i imagine that my uncle would say it's not really two million yeah it's not two uh, mil. It's after, not, it's after not taxes two mil. it's, it's not two mil taxes has been a a, a pretty you know a well-discussed topic, not least because I do live in Brooklyn. And so like CPAs, I've seen CPAs have been sobbing, you know, <laughs> they're pulling their hands. <laughs> like there's been this moment of realization that I don't just live in the state of New York, but the city of New York. It's been, it's been real hard. Uh, are you, are you, Pat, are you sure you're not incorporated in Delaware? Uh, well, you know, we'll see. Here. We'll see how the, how flexible the tax rules are on that. I I actually heard that you recently moved to Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so if, any, if anyone out there is listening, uh... well, Pat, yeah, might, people might be stunned to find that uh, on our on your official NBC information, it has you registered as a resident of the Cayman Islands. Um, <laughs> That's, um, yeah. Um, haven't you guys noticed my apartment in the sun, sunny Caymans? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why he's got that plan. My one bedroom apartment in the Caymans. Yeah, been in where, the Caymans. Where, where there are uh, emergency vehicles going all the time. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's so noisy in the Caymans. Yeah, yeah you had another person drowned um, too soon. Oh. Uh, just, <laughs> way too soon, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Pat, you know what? We always were. So, Pat, Pat Crane, we said he won. $2 million playing this best ball contest. And a big part of this 
Pat, was all last summer you and Kyle were talking about week 17 stacks and bringbacks. Yeah. And I was like, you know, man, we're trying to talk about like week one here. We're like, <laughs> we're like real fantasy. And but week 17, did the obsessive focus on week 17 pay off? I would have to assume it that it did. Or did it pay off in like a different way than you expected? Uh, how did the week 17 focus pay off? Well, it paid off in kind of an unusual way, I guess, in that like the team that advanced was not a team that I thought was very well positioned in terms of the games that were stacked within this lineup. And those games were um, the, I had a Tom Brady to Chris Godwin single stack with DJ Moore coming back. Not exactly, you know, what you would have picked on Sunday morning. (laughs) Um, And then I had uh, Ramondre Stevenson, Jacoby Myers, Tyquan Thornton. uh, And then I had as part of a big, to a led dolphin stack that might be one that you would have picked although it didn't have Tyreek it had Waddle Gasicki Raheem Mostert was intending to have Sony Michelle when he was back on the Dolphins of course he wasn't there anymore but it's like this big game stack that had pieces of both sides but then two was not in that so that's not all that exciting and then I had uh Daniel Jones uh stacked with Wanda Robinson who's obviously out for the season I also had Saquon Barkley that's sort of helped but then Daniel Jones actually got passed by Brady so all that uh, none of those guys were in my final lineup. So the stacking kind of, you know, it helped and it, and it didn't help uh, leading up to, I was like, is this really going to matter? But of course it it was massive ultimately because um, Tom Brady to Chris Godwin with DJ Moore coming back, wasn't just very helpful for this team, but it was, it was not common in the final round. Um, And so it was most Brady teams were probably eliminated. Yeah. It was a, it was a big point of differentiation for this team. Um, and I was talking with with Adam Levitan. He had me on his show, and he was saying, "You know, you're almost trying to advance the worst possible team <laughs> to the final round. Like you, like as as bad as it has to be, just good enough to get you there. But then you kind of want it to be quote unquote bad because then it's going to have less common players. And so this didn't have Justin Jefferson, who 41 percent of the field had. Instead, it had Austin Eckler, and so that ended up being a, a massive leverage point. But I do think ultimately that the the stacking did help. Although I I probably took it too far when I stacked." When I did a little mini correlation, once I took George Kittle, I had to tackle on Hunter Renfro. You got to tackle on Hunter Renfro. <laughs> when, uh, when, I saw your, when I saw your winning lineup, Hunter Renfro was definitely the funniest player. Yeah. Like even funnier than Sony Michelle. It's like, like I kind of understood the Michelle process. Not that I didn't understand the Renfro process. Like we had Wandale, that didn't make me laugh. Tyquan Thornton didn't make me laugh. Sony Michelle didn't make me laugh. And for some reason, Hunter Renfro did make me laugh. Because it's funny. That's why it made me laugh. (laughs) That was why I laughed. Uh, Well, think think of uh, the the most popular Week 17 stack that completely flamed out. uh, Well, I guess not completely, but Broncos Chiefs was the the most popular. And everybody said, oh, you got to get your Broncos and Chiefs for Week 17. You're saying you know, maybe look to another game, especially in these massive, huge field tournaments, look to another game to stack instead of the one that that jumps out to everyone. And I I think that's a great point. I think you do want to stack those games. Like you want to have your, because in some outcomes, like that game blows up and this team's totally dead. So I think you want to have, you want to stack, but I guess it's like a lesson in, if you get boxed out of those games, like that's okay like stack up some other things yeah. and maybe, maybe, you know, you'll be in a position where, I mean, this was like heading into the the day. I was like, this is highly improbable that any of this breaks my way, but it is only the final week is 470 teams. That's like both a lot of teams and also not that many teams. Like if a couple weird things happen and uh, you know, Tom Brady finally going off. Uh, you see, man, I guess like the greatest player in league history, like finally regressing to the mean like, it just seemed like we had given up hope that it was ever going to happen. I'm like, because I had Tom Brady in a really important two-quarterback league. I'm like, this dude's just never going to have a three-touchdown game again as long as he lives. He did have one in, like, week 14. But like, it never made sense that he didn't have the blow-up game. And then he did have the blow-up game. And now some of our phones are blowing up with people asking for money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, ro- the royal we. Yeah, yeah, not me uh, at all. But uh, people know. Yeah, I just wanted to. Denny, am I being too obvious? Uh, <laughs> am I being too? Because uh, my home, um, it no longer has a roof after Jamar Chase missed four games in the middle of the season. I'll just be honest with you. Um, in that league where 
you lose all your money I do. Yeah. <laughs> for one player missing one yeah. one game. Yeah, well, it was I one did. month. It wasn't one game. It was one yeah. month. And yeah, now, that's right. That's right. Uh, my kids. I don't know. This might not even still be legal on the East Coast. My children now wear barrels to school. <laughs> <laughs> That has been outlawed here. I, <laughs> <laughs> I figure that's been outlawed on the East Coast. In the Caymans. It's been outlawed in the Caymans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is where you've lived for four and a half where, years. Grown, so, born and raised. No, no born and raised. That's right. We'll, we'll move on to other subjects really quickly, but Crane's team was Tom Brady, Tua, Daniel Jones, Austin Eckler, Saquon, Ramondre, Raheem Mostert, Sony Michelle, DJ Moore, Jalen Waddell, Godwin, Renfro, Tyler Lockett, Jack Myers, Wandale Robinson, Tyquan Thornton, George Kittle, and Mike Jacecki. Who who was the most important player on this team? Who was the MVP, Pat Crane? Austin Eckler is the MVP. Uh, he scored two touchdowns in week 16, which got this team into the finals in the first place. I was I squeaked in. This team finished second in its uh 12-team league. It, it it did okay in week 15. It wasn't really too much of a sweat to get through there but then squeaked by, like barely got in because of Austin Eckler's second touchdown. He does get me in uh, to the final. And then I was in second place at one point uh, late in the kind of four o'clock window. And the only way that I could get through because the team ahead of me had George Kittle, had Tyler Lockett, who's on this team, like basically all my active players, I was blocked except for Austin Eckler as a 72 yard touchdown at that point. <laughs> So that's what got me into first place. Really, the, the only way I could have made first place um, was Austin Eckler going off. And in addition to that, like I said before, so much of the field had Justin Jefferson. So that led to fewer Austin Eckler teams. It was a huge point of leverage on all of those teams that, you know, Justin Jefferson had such a down game. Austin Eckler goes off. He was off, on so. Jair Alexander Island in week 16. Yeah. Truly, truly the MVP. Uh, George Kittle, also a huge part of how I got to the finals with his big two weeks. Yeah, it was really nice that the 49ers remembered the George Kittle – was paid by their organization. Uh, who's this guy? Uh, yeah, good timing. That good was time. really good timing. How many times do you think during the season Tom Brady was your top scoring quarterback? Like three? I'm not even. I, yeah, do you I, have I, data I on that. Could, well, because Tua had such a nice run, and then I did go and look because, of course, you're going to do this right. You're like, God, what if I drafted Tyler Algier instead of Daniel Jones? Because I, <laughs> I, I. I was a big Tyler Algier guy, and he had this big week 17. I was like, I might, this might not even be a sweat. This is the type of things I was doing on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Week ago. Um, and I went through You were, and I you were like, in a real good place all week. Oh, I was in, yeah, just a great yeah. place. <laughs> so I was just going through, like, tell me Daniel Jones got me through. Tell me his points mattered. And they did. I wouldn't have advanced without Daniel Jones. So yeah, I found really? out. Yeah, um, that, that made me feel better. Uh, that was kind of like, uh, I just thought of the Saving Private Ryan meme. Earn this. And he did. <laughs> Daniel Jones earned this. He did. <laughs> Too soon? Thank, uh, thank goodness for the Vikings pushing the Giants mm -hmm. out of their run heavy ways. Yeah. But, but it's not too soon. World War II was 70 years ago. You can make earn this joke. Well, also, now, that's okay? from a movie. So I, I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we have, I guess we've talked, but so we talked about best ball a lot last off season, and we will be doing that again. Yeah, so and, sorry, bud. It is fun. No, it was honestly, it's a ton of fun. We had a ton of, we did several best ball drafts live on air. It's going to be you know, probably annoying for you. Cause now you're like the certified, we already treated you like Mr. Best ball. Now you're like the certified public expert on best ball. And you're going to be feeling well, but keep in mind, I got in the worst possible team into week 17. Well, so there's a best ball is, lesson yeah. right there. Yeah. There's a best. How many teams did you have in the BBM three, by the way? I maxed it. I had 150. I advanced 30. And then I advanced 10 of those to the cent or sorry, not 10. I advanced, uh, it's one of 10 to get through. I advanced four of my 30 teams to the semis and then one of those four to the final. Uh, what, one more question uh, that I was thinking about today when I was just driving around in my car. Um, it, it's probably a silly question because a lot of people who are best ball experts, DFS experts have day jobs. Do you think this would have been possible if you had not started working for Rotor World, you know, like two years no. ago, like, is that what like opened up the time to do this where it be, like it was literally your job or I don't even know what the point of this question is. Cause it's not like, uh, you know, a huge tip. If you want to win in best balls, come work for Roto World. <laughs> well, it's not a bad selling point. Right. Were, uh, were you already playing this much before you were quote in the industry or did that kind of open the flood? I mean, I know I you were, were a big time fantasy player. I've that. played more for sure. Since I've done, I mean, part of the reason I wanted to go full time 
in the industry is because it's like I wanted to kind of marry the, you know, like give the yeah, obsession yeah. some some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have, get yeah. some ROI on yeah. your, uh, yeah. Yeah. Or even if and, you're not uh, winning contests, you are still getting paid for knowing about fantasy. Right, right. It's called raising the floor on uh, obsession. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, no, I definitely do. I mean, not only because I had like more time to to do fantasy stuff, but also like I'm coming on here, you know, talking to, to other fantasy sickos, getting, right. getting Kyle's best ball sicko brain uh, <laughs> and talking time. week 17 correlations. And I was, I wrote about some of the stuff like I wrote in one well, road world this summer. I wrote about uh, both Austin Eckler and Saquon Barkley, who were the first two running backs I picked as, as targets because of their profiles. I wrote about uh, going with three quarterback builds as a, as a viable strategy, even though it wasn't my favorite, uh, you know, I thought it was viable. And particularly, I thought it was viable with running back, running back starts because of the way kind of the, the the values, the value pockets of the draft sort of seemed to to lay out. I was like, you know, that third quarterback, you're probably foregoing a running back selection when you take that third quarterback. So it's especially viable if you've already kind of gotten running back taken care of early in the draft, that type of stuff. So doing that type of research, which I was doing, I was like in the research process for that article when I drafted this team, I think like directly contributed. Wow. Yeah, that's just crazy. So we we did we really did talk about it a lot last year. We're gonna talk about it a lot again this year. It's a great way to spend your summer if you're waiting for redraft to start, or if you you want to expand beyond redraft. Uh, man, it's just crazy. It seems like just like two or three years ago that was the MFL ten era. Yeah, and real heads will remember the MFL tens. And yeah, the upside come a long way. got me got me more into it. You know, you can actually hit something big. Yeah. Um, I, let me. Shout out to Pete Overzet for his Week 17 video because that that was unreal. And then shout out to Alex Baker, Osimo, who uh, wrote an article on three quarterback builds, which got me thinking about that a lot more. And he specifically said, you know, you can get a low owned stack into the final week with a three quarterback build, and that that happened. That happened. Um, so that ha- this that happened on the micro level. That happened on the macro level. Pat Crane took down the BBM three. We are very proud. I'm saying, I'm sounding like, sorry, I was to say we are very proud of him. Like it was a sound sarcastic, but we are very <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> yeah. a really amazing accomplishment. So, you know, who didn't have many amazing accomplishments the past four years. Uh, Pat Crane's had a lot of life changes. You know, he's moved on in his career. He's moved on in his personal life. Cliff Kingsbury didn't do the same thing. Um, four years in Arizona. Did not go well. He made the playoffs one time, got utterly annihilated on Monday Night Football by the same, by, excuse me, the Los Angeles Rams in the wild card round last year. Was supposed to be Mr. Air Raid, and yet was somehow had better designed rushing attacks than he did passing attacks. Like always became some of the horizontal raid, very little vertical threat to Cliff Kingsbury's raid in Arizona, and just never stopped clashing with his quarterback, Kyler Murray, and just that seemed to be the final straw and what really doomed him in Arizona. He's out. Uh, Kyler Murray is still there. He's recovering from a torn ACL. So I guess the question really is who in the world should the Arizona Cardinals, what kind, what's the archetype of a coach the Arizona Cardinals should hire to replace Cliff Kingsbury to get the most out of Kyler Murray? Cause I think we've already kind of had this discussion a little bit. I feel like it's gotta be like a, a hardo, you know, like, like we don't like our yeah. old school, co- but like, it doesn't work. But like, doesn't what, work what, what's what's what, what's going to work with Kyler? It does, I, I mean, Ky- Kyler is going to be hiring this person, so you know he's. he's they told it, him that. I mean, he you know he has input, and this, this is putting it mildly. This is going to it's going to be his his call. He's not he's not hiring a, a hard nosed veteran retread coach. Like he's going to hire someone who will do what he wants to do. Um, Mike Zimmer needs to move to a warmer climate. Come on, guys. Like, I, oh, gosh, please. Oh, oh, my God. Mike, Mike Zimmer would I'll be fired in the preseason. <laughs> 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 He'd be fired July 6th. Uh, yeah, no, it, 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 I, I, do, I do think that uh, Cliff Kingsbury's offense in part could not work because, um, you know, look, we all know this and no one says it because Kyler Murray's short. Oh, no. He's short, man. Stop, you stop, get, stop you drafting get, little guys in the in the in the first in the first ten picks. Stop. We, we you, you, it doesn't work. This guy's like five eight on his tippy toes. It doesn't. It does not translate. It can't. Like he's a great playmaker or whatever, and he's fast, I guess. But oh, man, oh man, I I just I don't get how this offense is supposed to work with with his limitations. 
his height limitations uh, and and his propensity to check down. He does he just does check down a lot. Pat, do you have advice for Kyler Murray other than getting taller? Um, what kind uh, of coach does Kyler Murray need? I mean, he needs. I I agree. He cannot have a hardo coach. He needs. No, he. I I I, I will fight you guys. He has to. Have, I feel like it's the only possible outcome. He's gonna have someone. He's got to parse. Someone's got to parcels him back to the Stone Age. He's basically. going. He's going to be. I, I take no pleasure in saying this. A coach killer for his entire career. He is going to absolutely one after the other after the other. Coaches cannot survive Kyler Murray. So instead of instantly cutting off Pat Crane again, I will let him talk. What kind of coach does he need? Well, I mean, I don't. You know, will the coach go there? But I mean, Sean Payton's being linked to the Broncos. What if? What about the Cardinals? You know, I have thought about that, and he's. He's like the perfect middle ground where players like to play for him, but he's not a pushover. And he has a track record of success, actually. And a track record of success with a short quarterback. A short quarterback in Drew Brees, one of the original two short quarterbacks. Sean Payton can go down as the ultimate short quarterbacks coach. I've been Sean Payton, man. Don't go to Denver. Like, just don't. I mean, I that's gotta be speaking of like a coach killing situation. Is there any way Sean Payton can have success there when they don't have their first round pick this year? If they have Sean Payton, they won't have their first round pick next year is my guess. I feel like he's got to hold out for a better opportunity. I think Brandon Staley has like left his right flank open after whatever that was he did on Sunday. And then maybe Payton can hold out for that, but I don't even know where I'm going. I don't think this is even a question as much as a plea not to go to Denver for Sean. I'm I'm with you on what Sean Payton should do. I think, yes, hold out for Den or hold out for, uh, LA because I think that's that's opening up at some point. Do you uh, think it's opening but, up this year? Yeah, it's open. It's gonna open up, Sean. You, you, you know, <laughs> you gotta take another year off. It's all right. It will be available <laughs> at some point. I, what about like Ben Johnson? You know, he another somewhat limited quarterback in Jared Goff, who's been pretty successful, and I think maybe somewhat limited in the same way. Uh, not all the same ways, but Goff has a pretty nice deep ball. It's not like he lacks for arm strength, but he he likes to throw short too much, but they've kind of worked with that. They've made that work. There's still a deep element to the Lions passing game, but there's also, you know, a lot of kind of underneath stuff. I think they've been more creative uh, than the Cardinals. The Cardinals, you know, they, they do have a pretty good run game, but they just, I, I don't know. I don't think they've been maximizing Kyler, even though they have like no. a, a pretty solid running attack. That is the thing about Kyler and Cliff, where like as obstinate as Kyler like clearly is, and you know we all the like the very out in the open rumors about him not preparing enough, he still at the end of the day was just not set up for success with this offensive approach. And yeah, there's he's got a lot of tools still. I mean, one thing about Kyler is that he's so much more effective when he can run, but like the second he like pops up an injury report, like with anything, he's like a way less effective runner. Yeah. He's just got – he's yeah. at like a career crossroads already. Um, ben Johnson would be a really, really interesting hire for the Cardinals. And it's weird. There's not like a lot of like really – I guess with like scoring down in the NFL this year, there's not nearly as many like trendy OCs. I feel like like if the Dolphins had done better – like who even is – does the Dolphins hmm. even have an offensive coordinator? I, mean, I know Mike McDaniel's the play caller. Is there like a – there's no like famous McDaniel acolyte though, is there? Yeah. Um, no, maybe, yeah, that'd maybe, be tough too because you're you're like McDaniel's the guy you really wanted to hire when you hire yeah. McDaniel's OC. What about Ken Dorsey from the Bills? Should he have any juice? Or, yeah, I think so. Because um, he's he I was kind he's of a known he was a known commodity even before Josh Allen. He's got <clears> kind of interesting. Are there any? I mean, I, Eric Bieniemy. Um, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. He, talk he, about like, Hardo. I mean, there we go. Maybe. Uh, but I feel I feel like. Uh, Eric Bieniemy's clashing with Patrick Mahomes does not pretend. To no, it doesn't pretend well because Pat Mahomes, no. pretty relaxed guy. Yeah, I, <laughs> seems I can't easy imagine. to get along with. Yeah, yeah. he does. Now, just getting back to to Kyler as a quarterback, though, you look at his uh, um, completion rate over expected this year before his season-ending injury, twenty uh, fifth. Okay, yeah. we're talking we're talking Jared Goff, Russell Wilson range, Marcus Mariota range. Okay. <laughs> Like that's, that's pretty poor. Uh, and uh, I, I, I don't, I think that you have to build the offense so that he doesn't have to be Superman. 
you know, and, and he, but he, but he has had to do that. Remember that play against the Raiders really this year. He ran mm-hmm. around for literally yep. 25 seconds. Like that stuff is cool and everything. That doesn't, that, yeah, you can't depend on that. That's no, that, K- Kyler that's is like, I feel like had the most failed Superman plays I've ever seen <laughs> too, where he does that. And Oh, it's a 17 yard sack. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, you're right. That was so uh, Kyler deserves a lot of the blame. I feel like for the Cardinals failures, but it's just, it's inarguable that he was not set up. To, and yeah, so often Denny, you're absolutely right. He was put in that position. To like, well, I hope, well, the Kyler can make a play. Yeah, just, uh, just just dodge fifteen tacklers yeah, on one play, <laughs> yeah, so. and you'd be good. He's it, he's definitely limited, but he's limited in a in a like you can get better than this from what he. Yeah, you know, and from, I don't know how limited he, he actually is. I mean, his arm is kind of a cannon. Like his yeah. his ability to operate like a traditional offense from the pocket, I think, is is somewhat limited. Yeah, to the, to the and it's weird. I say his arm is a cannon, but. Uh, they've tried like a lot of different deep threats there and he like doesn't ever have chemistry with any of them like somehow. <laughs> uh, so maybe that's kind of a poor sign, including Marquise Brown. who We played with in college. We've talked a lot about Cl- uh, Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, we have no idea what he's going to do next. He's going to be an offensive coordinator either in college or maybe the NFL. I had a Patriots fan friend uh, just text me. Oh no. Ellipses. Oh with a quote, a, a quote from Bill Belichick that was recirculating from last month. Bill Belichick on Cliff Kingsbury. First off, tell me if you think this is good. May, I couldn't tell if he was actually saying something good or bad about Cliff Kingsbury. He has a good offensive system, ellipses. Saw that in college. <laughs> Had a lot of explosive plays and players at Texas Tech. They're explosive at Arizona, have been since he's been there. And then, you know, he just like stared at his But that's, that's not true, Bill. Bill's not actually watching the tape. He's uh, not, I'm, but do you think he I'm, likes the guy? He I'm played imploring. Cliff Kingsbury played for Bill Belichick. I, I know. Briefly. No, you might as well just put him put him on the Patriots staff. He's already there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but but he but yeah, no, the, Bill's not grinding the tape because they're not explosive. It's a it's a no. stale, predictable offense. Get out of here with that stuff. I will say if Cliff goes to the Patriots, all the Ramondre. Where it's oh going to be a huge season for Ramon. We are going to get a hundred catches where he falls straight down, and <laughs> but we get that PPR point, and that's what's important. How does Cliff design Dude, such right. good rushing attacks? I don't understand. Nothing about anything he did in Arizona like ever made sense. Nothing. Like they were always for four years. They were one of the better designed rushing offenses in the NFL. I swear mm-hmm. to God. And yeah, uh, but never... pull up like DeAndre Hopkins like route tree uh mm. from nfl next gen will like yeah. post the, no, the, the like all the routes and you see like justin jefferson this year and he's like lining up everywhere running a variety of routes all over the field the defense has no idea what he's going to do next you go to deandre hopkins and it's like all from the same side and it's just like beep, beep, yeah beep. it's not nothing's good. happening a legit question i mean it is a funny question but i mean this is a serious question would the patriots be better off with year two of matt patricia or year one of cliff kingsbury oh my he, god Year one of Cliff Kingsbury. And I've been a big critic of Cliff's, but uh, here's what I do like about Cliff. He has a background in offense. I think that's generally <laughs> important uh, for an maybe, People can maybe hear I'm with, still congested laughing at that. May, maybe with Kingsbury calling the plays, they'll be able to get the plays in before the, the uh, clock expires, uh, which true. is something that they had trouble with in January. Like, yeah. like that's something you have trouble with in a preseason game and you say, Oh, okay. Like they're, they're still installing. So they're still in install mode in December and January is unbelievable. The, this, the dysfunction, forget about, forget about the scheme. Okay. Forget about the lack of downfield throws, lack of create creativity in the new England offense. I'm just talking about the ability to get a play on the field and to say, and to snap the ball before the, the game, the play clock. Uh, no, it turned, I mean, we saw, I mean, Mac Jones, became like they asked mac jones like why he wears the mask because he had become the joker um in the middle of the season, like, every press conference began with quite mac i know you, you didn't answer this last week but why do you wear the mask uh, how, did you, how did you become the joker and you know he's very diplomatic at the press conference where he you know claims he likes but on the field that bit with the pencil that was dark yeah yeah <laughs> on the field yeah he lit an entire garbage bag full of hundred dollar bills on fire on the field uh, Mac Jones, <laughs> after they called back-to-back timeouts in that goal line series, ironically in Arizona. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, and by the way, if you haven't seen Bill Belichick's comments from Monday, our NBC colleague Tom Curran on basically point blank asked him, was hiring Matt Patricia dumb? And like he really did not water down the question much from that. He's basically like, was this dumb? And Bill Belichick did not say no. <laughs> he did not say no. It was a very, very illuminating. It was like a two-minute response as usual, but he did not say no. We and also they, – they asked him if Mac Jones was like about his status with the team, and he was like, he's good enough to be a quarterback in this league or something yeah, like that. Yeah, no, I mean, oh, that is a style. Yeah, but that's tough. Yeah. That's yeah. a tough scene. So Arizona is one of the head coaching vacancies. The Carolina Panthers are another. The Denver Broncos are, of course, another. The Houston Texans are the second time in – or excuse me, the third time in three years are one of the openings. I guess the Colts are an opening. Am I missing any openings? I think those are the five openings we have right now. Um, by the time you're listening to this, there could be another surprise firing or two. But it seems like Arizona, Carolina, Denver, Houston, and Indian- Indianapolis – all pretty rough situation. I mean, most times a coaching jobs coming open, it's a rough situation. These are all kind of like uniquely rough situations. I feel like where like Arizona just has been a directionless franchise for a while. Indy, all of a sudden you have a very, very impulsive owner. Denver, where you have the toxic quarterback situation. Houston, where you have the toxic everything situation. Which of these vacancies right now would you consider the best? I guess I'll, I'll throw to you first, Patrick Crane. Yeah, I mean, it's not – I guess the Colts are in a decent decent shape in terms of their draft position, right? Um, yeah, they, they didn't – unlike most of these teams, they haven't given away their first-round pick, so that's good. Uh, yeah. Uh, you've got some pieces there. The offensive line was not good this year, but maybe you can kind of – they've got uh, – I know they've got Nelson. They've got a, maybe a chance at having a good offensive line. You obviously have Taylor. Michael Pittman seems like is a, a fine – you know, he probably better as a number two, but he's like a solid piece to have. Uh, and then if they can get a quarterback through the draft, I mean, that's that's somewhat appealing. It's like a better version of Houston where, you know, you're building through the draft. You obviously have a lower pick, but uh, they don't even have the number one pick now. So, no, my God, uh, man, Lovey Smith, uh, the man, uh, a lot of Zoomers have probably never seen the classic film Office Space. Uh, Lovey Smith pulled an office space, I feel like, on the Texans, where he yeah. he got his money's worth on the way out the door. I and, did, I do, I did enjoy that. You know, uh, it's clear he wasn't coming back. He said, "Okay, how about this?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a stat: uh, no team had converted two fourth and tens in the same game all season. Oh, okay. and t- until the Texans did right, and the te- and the drive. Texans of all teams, like they're they're you know a horrific offense. I I have to say though, the Colts uh, had a magnificent tank job uh, in they that did. in that game. I actually think that that mistimed jump on that on that Aikens touchdown. I think that that was part of the tank. I don't believe that that guy, whoever he was, is is that bad at judging a football in the air. <laughs> That that he could miss it by that much. He missed it by a mile. He, and he's he's made that play a hundred times in his life, a thousand times. There's no way he was told. They were told, "Do not mess this up. Let them score. Let them win." I I actually don't believe that. Unfortunately, I want to believe it. I do believe like the axiom, like players don't tank, and like the coaches, I feel like can only tank as far as like what players they put on the field. But like, uh, dude, the, dude, the players really can't tank. Aikens a- Aikens is wide open. Wide open for that for that go ahead score. I mean, no, no one within 15 yards of him. He's the only guy seeing the ball. No, no. Maybe no, the guy's no. out there because they know he always misjudges I, the ball. Maybe I, he's I too short. <laughs> right there. Yes. Look, I, I I'm my conspiracy addled mind is reeling. I, I now think the whole Jeff Saturday situation was all a scam to make sure that this season tanked. And it worked, and it worked beautifully. It does seem kind of, I mean, well, but hang on, because that that does sort of make sense. But then you remember, right, that Wright got fired after they got humiliated by the Patriots. So they 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 could have tanked even worse. Yeah, it was it was an accidental tank. It was not an intentional tank for the Colts. Well, and that's that's even sadder than I guess. It is. <laughs> Producer Adam points out most of these teams have elite draft picks. Bears number one, Texans number two. Uh, rather famously so the arizona cardinals number three the indianapolis colts number four 
The Denver Broncos, number five, except for 08, they traded the pick to the Seahawks. No. And uh, nevertheless, uh, Can I ask Carolina Panthers, question? number eight. Danny, you've just been you've just been hired as the GM for the Arizona Cardinals. You have the number three pick. Yeah. Oh no! Are, are you trading? Are you trading Kyler Murray? Abs- I'm absolutely yes. I'm oh I'm gosh. taking all. I'm taking every call, every call from every team that that wants in on the Kyler Murray experience. And I'm saying, and and you, imagine what you could get. You could get you could get a Russell Wilson type package. For him. Could you? I don't know. His personal brand is quite damaged. His body is literally you, damaged. No, right but now. but I mean the age difference too. I mean Russell That's Wilson true. got they, they got all that for Russell Wilson when he was thirty four years old. Oh, man, oh Russ, I, oh, I Russ, I I really I I think uh, I think I think I would Crane. Just Denny, like, did you lose to Kyler Murray in Call of Duty online? Were you playing? <laughs> I've never seconds been, ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played. Call of Duty. Yeah. Jenny, <laughs> legit question. Have you ever held a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5 controller? I've never held any PlayStation controller. Wow. Crane, have you? Do you game at all? Of course. I mean, okay. but I, 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 I've... <laughs> I've been in this country for <laughs> like what, how did you how have you avoided holding a holding a PlayStation controller? I've never even seen a PlayStation. <laughs> what? <laughs> the last video game system I saw was a Nintendo 64. That's it. And that oh, uh, we know that's a lie because you PlayStation play... came out when? I mean oh, know, the early You've got the Wii. You've got the, I got Wii. the Wii. I got Nintendo Wii. That's right. Do you not have the Switch? You gotta get a Switch. Your my son has a find life. okay yeah your son quote unquote I, I, and every night you're down there playing um, <laughs> i'm yeah. literally googling playstation original launch which is not something i thought it was, was like 1995 denny 1994 oh, it yeah. was <laughs> it was Where you yeah, going, dog? Where that's you more right in spirit because it was december 1994 there you go oh Where my you? god Where really i would have guessed like 2008 <laughs> what? Yikes. Uh, well, gaming is not a problem for denny denny do you consider <laughs> any of these openings good carolina arizona indianapolis denver houston like if you had become so say like uh like the nfl finally got mad like well they think this is so easy they should come do it right which right. opening would you take if you were I mean, challenged by the nfl to become an nfl head coach i i i think cray makes great points about the colts i'd probably lean, lean in that direction but just to name another team for the point of the exercise here i think that there there are two ways you could go about the denver situation okay mm-hmm. the one is you you take some notes from pete carroll's time with russell wilson and you say no we are not cooking with russ in fact, you are you are a game manager. Like you you are a caretaker of this offense, and you go in that direction because they have a they have a really strong defense, right? Not so much the rush defense, but the pass defense, which is obviously important. They have Javante Williams. Hopefully, he's back at full health. Uh, Jerry Judy, uh, Dulcich, and Sutton make for a pretty good trio of pass catchers. I'm not saying that you can make this team contend for a Super Bowl. But I, I do think that there is a way to to push this team into the postseason with more capable coaching. Something, something. Here, here's one one thing that you could do: you could use motion, pre-snap motion. <laughs> this is a thing that many teams use very successfully, and the Broncos never use it. And so that that is that is one way you could do it. You could also go to Denver, and you could uh, basically go into a, a, a you know get get rid of Russ and take the hit and go into a, uh, a, a nuclear winter type type situation <laughs> for for two or three years, play money ball, uh, just scrape by, and then you, you build again. So I think that those are two interesting ways to approach the Denver job. You could also do some play action. Russell Wilson, I mean, they didn't do nearly as much play action as they did in Seattle. Or am I imagining that, Pat? I um, think you're right about that, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll... I should have not asked that without having any well, idea. Well, but... I, I can pull it up, but they – I've almost talked myself or Denny's talked me into the Arizona one of maybe we do go to Arizona. We trade Kyler, you know, like, I don't know. Could you trade him to the 49ers is some kind of win now piece. Maybe they're, maybe they're not interested someone, but there's like a team like that, right. That'll probably give you a package back. There's maybe not Russell, but you know, cause he's coming off a torn ACL, but the, the age as Denny points out is massive, massive difference there. Yeah. And then you've already got the number three pick. Like, 
the re that you could do have a real quick rebuild in Arizona, which would be fun. And if you're a coach trying to survive that nuclear winter period, as we've seen in Houston, you don't usually, you know, you, no. it'll be the third or the fourth coach. You got to have, you got to be able to sell hope. And I think in Arizona, you might be able to sell hope if you have a new quarterback coming in this year to replace Kyler. I don't think they're going to trade Kyler, but I think the Broncos definitely have the most talent, but that job just becomes less attractive because <clears throat> the, the draft pick chaos and just you're in the division. Not only are you trying to bounce back from that kind of season, you're trying to bounce back from that kind of season in Patrick Mahomes' division, say nothing of Justin Herbert. And it's just a really – I think the, probably the best overall opening is maybe the Panthers. They have a blue chip pick. They have a decent amount of talent. They – would have been a totally different team if they had a good quarterback this year. And of course there's no press button uh, to getting a quarterback, but they, they have an owner that wants to spend money. I am not convinced he's a good owner. He's definitely like a fake analytic owner. Like David Tepper just like kept saying analytics like over and over again. And it was not true at all. Like he no, hasn't well, been I think it's Matt Rule had said it to him a bunch of times. It's true. Matt Rule got that PFF sub. He, he never used it, but he got it. <laughs> Uh, just to answer your question real quick about uh, Russell Wilson in and uh, play action, he uh, he used the Broncos used play action on 21 percent of his dropbacks this year that ranked 31st among all quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Yikes, e gads. So none of these openings are that attractive this year. We're like even last year, like the Jaguars were like an attractive opening. Like there's mm -hmm. no like Jaguars opening this year. No. Um, and there's no Doug Peterson. There's no like Super Bowl winning retread. Co I mean, I guess unless you want to hire John Fox, although he didn't win the Super Bowl, he just kept losing them. Um, well, isn't Peyton, isn't Peyton the, the Peterson? Yeah, Peyton is the Peterson. That's right. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> Far better coach, too, than old Dougie. And Dougie had a rough game Saturday night, by the way. Man, what were they doing? Mm -hmm. Uh, this they were doing, you know, the Tobias Funke, but maybe it'll work for us meme with first down <laughs> runs like, against uh, a great run. D. I know. And a horrible pass. <laughs> they, <laughs> look, they, I, you have to hand it to Doug Peterson. We don't know if he wanted to win that game, but he certainly didn't want to lose no, he like that. That was, that was clear from the start. Like, we're <laughs> like, folk, like, guys, we're going to get out there and we're not going to lose. That, that, was, that was the pregame. And by the way, the Jacksonville Jaguars host the Los Angeles Chargers Saturday evening on NBC and Peacock. Denny will be there with special guest announcer Al Michaels. Not a joke. Al Michaels coming back to NBC to call the Saturday evening game with Tony Dungy. This is um, news to me. Wow. It is after Denny was fired from the broadcast. But by the way, uh, a lot of Crane, I know there's been some internal rumors that you're going to be donating uh, some of your winnings to the Denny Carter Legal Defense Fund. Do not do it. <laughs> Um, first off, I'm going to make sure it's deemed illegal. And secondly, he doesn't deserve it. Now, is that a threat? Because Denny's got lawyers now as part of this. Uh, <laughs> well, now this you're going to have all sorts of lawyers, too. <laughs> oh, man. I got to get better lawyers. Um, <laughs> well, what, oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> now you get me to get lawyers. Things are about to get a lot more litigious. Around <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was possible, but they are going to get a lot more litigious. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, bounced from the playoffs again in humiliating fashion yet again on Sunday night, this time not even in the playoffs was he bounced from the playoffs against a team that had nothing to play for, but pride on the field. I mean, I think we all saw the same thing, like seemed like a very unusually, like uh, he didn't seem devastated by the loss. He seemed like in a very like nostalgic mood where like, it seemed like yeah. he was like soaking in the environment at Lambeau field. It was a pretty interesting scene to be honest. Uh, Seemed like he was saying goodbye, at least maybe to the Packers. Do we think Aaron Rodgers is going to play in 2023? And where do we think he might be playing in 2023? Craig Dennis Carter, what say you? I, I'm so tired of it. <laughs> it's it's exhausting. I, I can't imagine how it feels to be like in the organization for the Packers, a, a Packers fan. You you have to go through this every offseason. Like, if you're asking me right now, after watching him last night with Randall Cobb, you know, all that stuff, then, yeah, I would say that that was probably his last game as a Packer. Um, I don't know if his last game in the NFL, but I think that this whole thing has run its course. I think that Jordan Love, in his appearance <laughs> against the Eagles uh, last month or maybe November, 
what showed that he he is ready for a shot. Appearance is a bit strong. It was like one quarter, but to start, it was a, I thought it was a whole half. But anyway, either either way, it was football. I mean, it was some football. It was he, some football. He, I I think it is t- it's time to move on. I think Aaron Rodgers probably knows that. I I don't know. I can't cite fifteen things about his contract right now that make that possible or not. It's possible. quite complicated. But I'm I'm thinking that uh that kind of that walk off that we saw last night was not on accident. No. Well, also, I mean, it seems to me, you know, and this is a guess, but it, it seems like Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers does like attention. You know, and what a what a good way to soak up some quick attention than to, you know, Jameson like, hey, man, can I get your jersey? I think I'm keeping this one. I know. I know. He knew where the yeah. cameras were. That's for he sure. He sure did. Yeah. He didn't know where it was like a, there was a director for that, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this whole thing was kind of kind of melodramatic and everything. I don't know. Uh, I, guess, I would guess it, that Denny's right. He's probably done with the Packers. But, um, God, I mean guess at this point i'm kind of i'm kind of hoping you know i i i can't do it i can't do it anymore no i'm not i'm not watching the next season of this i think it's even money he's gonna be the carolina panthers quarterback in 2023 david tepper david tepper wants a quarterback so bad they've got a receiver at least um i don't know i i I feel like they're gonna be like the team the desperate quarterback team this offseason is my guess is the panthers when when they see them uh, hire Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, that might be a sign when they hire Nathaniel Hackett as head coach. That will never happen. <laughs> well, they're, they're always look. They're always the quarterback desperate team, and they are. I, I, I can't imagine how miserable Rogers is going to be in Car- if he went to Carolina. Man, he would hate it. He would hate everything about it. Uh, uh, he's, he he hates it. He hates it in Green Bay. Like you know, he's the most ornery, uh, uh, difficult person in pro pro sports right now he he was swatting at the camera when the camera was trying to was trying to show him uh, going into the tunnel last night with randall cobb that was just for effect because like, like we dude, said he was actually like, hamming it up for the camera to him. <laughs> i just i just don't know this guy please i mean he's got to be some there's got to be some hobby he has where he you know he can do that instead i think i think um, podcasting oh, i believe is <laughs> oh he'll be podcasting there's no <laughs> doubt about that um I think all three of us prob. It seemed like both sides are going to be ready to move. I, I think the Packers are finally ready after a few false starts. And old friend Hayden Winks insists the contract is tradable, especially if it's after June first. It's a pretty mm-hmm. complex, mm-hmm. unique situation. But Hayden was claiming that the contract is tradable. Don't no, don't quote me on that. I mean, maybe I'll it's not. It looked very it would tough. Be, it'd be pretty culty to bring in Rodgers, <sighs> and that would, would be. be more appealing. Uh, if you're Rodgers, I think. Plus, uh, Dome, you know, he gets to, gets to move out of the cold. There's no way he's going to another. He's not doing like what Russ or like Peyton Manning did. He's not going to a cold weather town. There's no way in hell. I think a huge reason for all these Packers chokes, Denny and I have kind of talked about that, these quote unquote chokes, is after December 20th in Green Bay, where like the warmest game time kickoff temperature you're going to get is 20 degrees. Every game becomes like a coin flip, basically. It's uh, not a home field advantage. Please don't do this. Please it's the exact don't do this. opposite of a home field please advantage. Please don't do this. Rodgers, it's the most conservative. We talk about play, playing not to lose. I mean, mm-hmm. this is that's been his whole deal, his whole career. Yeah. And, like, he loses to the Lions to get into the, the – they get bounced from the playoffs by the Lions, the most plucky, lovable team. So immediately, let's take the spotlight back. Back on me. I don't know if I'm playing anymore. Back to me. Not in a bad way, though. Back to me back. So put it right back on me in a good way. He lost to the 49ers at home. They got the bye. They lose. They play conservative. They don't play like they have an Excuse me. You have to play conservative when you can't, like, feel your no. face. The weather no. the weather is honestly a huge – the weather levels the playing field way too much. Yeah, that's the right. Calling it's the exact field. opposite of a home field advantage. Like, there's no real difference between Jimmy Garoppolo and Aaron Rodgers when it's eight degrees. It's that's cool. right. Maybe just not. Maybe just not. <laughs> no. I don't know. <laughs> no, look, I don't know. The, this is this is the reason Aaron Rodgers' best games have been, have come in, uh, in domes. Exactly. Think, 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 about, think about the – there was a playoff game against the Falcons uh, back in their Super Bowl run where he went ballistic, and you're thinking, if this game is in Green Bay, he doesn't throw for half of these yards. He, uh, every time he goes to Minnesota uh, in, in that dome, he goes crazy. Like, Aaron Rodgers would be, like, I think widely considered the greatest of all time if he didn't play in the the, the frozen tundra. I'm dead serious. They're always the one seed 
then like the five or the six seed comes in and it's 10 degrees with a negative four wind yeah. chill. Yeah. And it's like, there's no advantage. You're just like oh a bunch of dudes God. like crashing into each other. <laughs> like, or I don't know, maybe least. still, maybe still play aggressively when uh, a lot's on the line, you know, that's, oh, shit, that's, man. uh, yeah, that's, that's an option. A good point. It, it is, is true. The uh, kicking that field goal—they get the tight, bucks. dude. They get tight. They, they do. They they tilt. They tilt them, out of their minds. Play calling. The field goal they, they, attempt against the Bucks of two years ago. Oh, oh unforgivable on, on, on every level. Yeah, that was a that was a total choke. You want to talk about trying not to lose that that uh, their play calling and decision making in that NFC title game, right against the yeah, Bucks. Yeah. NFC I mean title that, game. that that is that was unforgivable. You just can never get over that. But it was a little. It was a little luck. Uh, a little, a little cold out that day, so you gotta, you gotta factor that in. Oh, come, on, nippy, <laughs> come on, man! Come on, man! Just because you're from the Northeast, uh, just, yeah. it's harder to make decisions. <laughs> it does. It's, it's like a, it's uh, yeah, it's like you can't think straight. Uh, yeah, I totally. Uh, moving on uh, from my cold weather opinions. Uh, I don't know. We're running out of time on the show, but. I don't know if this question even makes sense. Of the eliminated teams, of which there are 18, who is the most obvious to, quote, level up in 2023? It's kind of like asking who is this year's Lions. Everyone's like, the Lions are the team that's going to kind of break through this year. And they didn't break all the way through, but they almost got their nine and eight. The eliminated teams this year, the Patriots, the Jets, the Steelers, the Browns, the Titans, Colts, Texans, Raiders, Broncos, Commanders, Lions, Packers, Bears, Panthers, Saints, Falcons, Rams, Cardinals. Who is leveling up in 2023? Anyway. Well, I mean, I, they're, all, they're all just going to miss the playoffs again. I I do think that the the talent in the Atlanta offense is intriguing if we can get a little more passing, and not not a lot more, but a little more would would be would be nice. This team was. Arthur Smith was as stubborn as any coach in modern history uh, in, in, you know, establishing the run and running no matter what's happening, but with Drake London, with Kyle Pitts, with uh, Algier, uh, you know, I, I think that a, a feasible quarterback, a viable quarterback could make this offense pretty fun, especially for fantasy purposes. Uh, Pat, I did have some, some, uh, some stats I wanted to read off and maybe not now, but let me, or let me know if I should do that now on pass rate over expected this year compared to last year. No, oh, yeah. I could get into pass rate. Cause that's going to be, who's yeah. going to get more aggressive. Who's going to try to score some points. Right. Right. So I just, I wanted to say uh, just real quick on, on pass rate over expected uh, tw- 24 teams uh, this year were under their expected pass rate. Uh, 14 of those teams were under their expected pass rate on first and 10 um last year that's compared to co- compared to 2021 19 teams were under their expected pass rate and only five teams were under their expected pass rate on first and 10 so and we saw basically the rise of ultra run heavy teams including atlanta chicago tennessee cleveland for much of the season washington for a lot of the season carolina for the second half and the giants for much of the season uh so i, I and and this and this goes back to a trend in the NFL, which is running it more and passing it less as teams use. For some reason, the, the too high safety look has completely changed the landscape of the NFL, even though two high safeties have been around for what, three decades now. Long time. Um, uh, just to give you some, some idea of how much that has affected uh, offenses, two high safeties have been deployed on 55% of passing attempts in 2022. That's the highest rate in a season ever recorded by next gen stats. Uh, we are they, all Tony Dungy now, including right. Tony Dungy, who will be calling Jaguars Chargers. High, uh, two high safeties have created the most interceptions and allowed the second lowest completion rate uh, with that coverage since 2016. So it is absolutely destroying teams' ability to go downfield and to operate a, a pass heavy uh, offense that started with Kansas City. It's trickled down to all teams with, with, with good quarterbacks, basically with good quarterbacks, good receivers. Joe Burrow has said, look, we, there's nothing to, 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 to do downfield right now. Like we can't go downfield because they're just playing two guys 40 yards off the line of scrimmage. So I have no choice, but to dink and dunk. And that's the whole point is to make a team go 10 plays to score rather than the one big explosive play over the top. You can't do that anymore. So 
if, if we can get these teams, these ultra conservative teams to loosen up a little bit, it could be better for fantasy, including Atlanta, I think. And you do that by just slamming into them with some awesome runners. And then you can't play the two high safeties. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, Randy Moss is streaking down the field. Pat Crane had some thoughts. I do. I mean, the two teams uh, that I jumped to mind for me, uh, not the most creative, I suppose, but but I think they fit with Denny's point about being able to operate in that context. One would be the Lions, who, uh, you know, if they take another step forward, playoff team, uh, I would have loved to see them in the playoffs this year. But their defense was just so bad. Um, and if they can get that sorted out at all, they have this offense that, you know, can dink and dunk and sustain, sustain success. They were a run first team this year, but they were pass first on first and 10. They were trying to set up golf for success without leaning on him mm -hmm. too much, which I feel like is exactly what I would try to do if I had Jared Goff, right? I don't want my offense to be about Jared Goff, but I don't want to set him up for negative situations. They ran a lot, like they run a lot on third and long and stuff. They, they, they try to limit how bad it can get with Jared Goff. Um, but they've got Amon Ross St. Brown. They've got, you know, they can, they can kind of dink and duck down the field, but then Jameson Williams has flashed. I mean, he's going to be as like a, a, you know, plan B plan C deep threat. I mean, you only need a couple deep shots to him. I mean, you connect on one, it's like a touchdown a game. I mean, the guy's speed is uh, is as promised. So they're going to be even more fun next year with him in a full-time role, I think. Uh, and then the Jets, I mean, you look the at – The Jets are one that we need to talk, we needed to talk yeah. about and have a lot of the ingredients on paper. A lot of the ingredients. Brees Hall looks like an, a superstar. Garrett Wilson looks like a superstar. You know, and they have been willing to pass the ball when they don't have Zach Wilson, basically. Aaron uh, Rodgers could be going to the Jets, by the way, too. It's going to be another possible well, Rodgers. But... I hate to say this, but that would actually be pretty fun. It <laughs> 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 would actually be pretty you, fun. You triggered, Denny? No, a little triggered. Yeah. I mean, right. Garrett Wilson, as the kids say, to the moon. Yes, <laughs> truly. I mean, we're, we're talking about like... 206 Garrett Wilson, I think. <laughs> like, and the Lions, absolutely. So they were a darling last year. They're going to be a darling again. And I think they could be like one of those to the point where you could even say they'll be like a sneaky Super Bowl contender. Because yeah. one thing is the Super Bowl windows always open a lot earlier than expected. Championship windows in the NFL aren't like they are in like Major League Baseball or the NBA, where you're like, this team is set up for success in like two or three years because the careers are so short. Like teams age out much quicker than you'd expect. And like young teams, a lot of times arrive like way earlier than you would expect. And the Lions have building blocks all over the offensive line. They have building blocks all over their skill core. They have building blocks on their defensive line. They have a number of really talented young defensive backs. They have the coaching. I mean, I think even if Ben Johnson leaves, Dan Campbell's not calling the plays this year. He wasn't calling the plays this year, I don't think, most of the year. But I think it really is. It's a, one of those situations where he might not be calling the plays, but this is his philosophy. And he's like dictating what they do because their offensive turnaround started when he began to call the plays in 2021. Right. They were a lot better down the stretch. And I think Ben Johnson deserves a lot of credit, but that a lot of it is like Dan Campbell, like giving him a vision to implement. And I really do think it's tough. Because they don't, Jared Goff, I mean, you can make a Super Bowl with Jared Goff. We have seen it happen. They do need a better quarterback, probably, but I, I think the Lions are like very well positioned to take another. another yeah, and step. Dan Campbell's philosophy, by the way, is to score some damn points. Like, That's and, true. And, and I appreciate that. You know, as as, a, as someone who gets so tired of seeing these ultra conservative coaches just just try. You know, we're going to score points, but not too many points. We're going to take the field goals. We're going to do this. We're going to we're not going to go on fourth down from midfield. And he does it. He wants to score points badly. We saw that last night when he does the hook and ladder on that final oh, drive man. against the Packers, right? That was that, so amazing. It, it, it's, it's, it's just why now I understand the Lions were playing loose kind of fancy free. A little They've been bit, playing you know, loose because, all year, you know, but, but right. But I, I think that this is, this is a, a, a nice lesson. Honestly, we could use a tough guy like Dan Campbell at the head of the analytics movement. Please, yes. Dan, take the reins, man. He's the take reverse. The he's, he's the reverse Brandon Staley. We don't want the guy. I like analytics and then do a bunch of stuff. And it's awful playing your starters, getting Mike Williams hurt in week 18. We don't want that. We want big tough guy who makes a bunch of smart decisions. That sounds amazing. That's right. We don't want Brandon Staley. We don't want a Brandon Staley doing yoga on the field before the game. Okay. Yeah. This makes us look bad. Not okay. Enough. We, we don't need, we don't need that. We need Dan Campbell with his big jaw jutted out, his biceps ripping through his shirt. 
being Singing like Metallica. Yeah, it, it, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, he looks like James James Hetfield on the sideline, and and saying we're going for it on fourth and two from our own forty eight. We're doing it. Yeah, it's so the Jets could level up after the Lions. Not the that was an amazing Dan Campbell rant, by the way. <laughs> He's great. Not, he wants not to have tonight. a lion on a chain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was, uh, amazing coach. Amazing. Uh, rant is not the right word. Uh, what what is it when you love something? Uh, I, I, I soliloquy. Rant, happy rant. <laughs> soliloquy. I think well, I will say sol- for Dan Campbell too. Like his whole thing, and from the very beginning in the press conference where he was talking about biting kneecaps and stuff, he was talking about player empowerment, like listening to what the players want, player input, making sure everyone feels like they have their voice heard. If you watch Hard Knocks, all his coaches are like, "I get to be me." I do, you know, he hired me and he's like, I hired you because you're you like coach, coach the way you would coach. I want you to feel like, you know, you're not trying to just go to whatever I want, but you're actually empowered to, to do things the way you would want. I mean, it seems like a great guy to work for. I'm, we'll, I we'll truly do. think he's awesome. The show's almost over, but a few like kind of rapid, fi- who's more likely to make the playoffs in 2023 might go by division, the New England Patriots or the New York Jets. 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 I think it's got to be the Jets, but it's all about the quarter. If they don't make a serious move at quarterback, I would probably bet on Bill Belichick again because Bill Belichick, you know, he, we, somebody, someone had the amazing tweet. So Denny wouldn't understand this because he doesn't play video games. But like Bill Belichick, since he lost Tom Brady, he's kind of just like been in side quest territory. Like he's just trying to like have like amazing side quests where he finds <laughs> he finds all oh, 120 temples and he collects all. He's the been Korok exploring seed. the Patricia dungeon a little too long. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> has collected every last Korok seed on <laughs> Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, um, and maybe this will like kind of jar him out of the side quest. Like, all right, can't make the defensive coordinator the offensive coordinator. I mean, sure, we still almost made the playoffs even when doing that. <laughs> maybe this gets him out of side quest yeah. mode i've been there man go, yeah, go know, back it's, it's time to tackle the main objective well, listen i want to store i wanted to store more weapons on breath of the wild so <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, um, Bill check's showing everybody his house yeah i don't know what the hell you guys cool, are talking cool about. shields man i know yeah he's got like five just amazing shields but he still hasn't beaten the final boss um, <laughs> or take taken on any of the divine beasts um that one pittsburgh steelers or cleveland browns the browns unfortunately probably seem like a pretty easy like could very easily they're seven and ten could very easily be a ten and seven team probably in 2023 correct yeah, there's no way this offense is going to be as bad as it was. I mean, I mean they, maybe they Deshaun to... Watson is never going to be the same player again no. uh, after his early career peak. But like, okay. I feel like they're going to find a way to meld his style and Kevin Stefanski. One style. thing, one thing about Deshaun Watson in Cleveland is what we were talking about with Green Bay. Two months of the year are wiped out for Watson now because it's 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 uh you know 20, 20 degrees or, or below in in Cleveland in November and December. It's a horrible environment for fantasy purposes, um, yeah, and I, I don't think that that's that's changing. Now, Kevin Stefanski does need to get out of the Baker Mayfield mode. He I does. Think. And he didn't. It's tough because it is hard to change midseason after you do something for eleven right. games and Jacoby Brissett. Well, it was pretty tough. It wasn't even midseason. It was week thir- 13, 14. Yeah, yeah it was week thirteen. They sold apparently. You guys read the thing where he shows up and he's got the iPad of like, here's all the plays you're going to run for you. I've got the Dolphins completely figured out. It's going to be great. I mean, I don't know. I think there's maybe some real problems here. Uh, whatever ideas they had do not seem to have worked so far. They did not work for those six games where he was quite literally one of the three or four worst quarterbacks in the league, according yeah. to EPA per play. Uh, the Steelers, the, I don't know, man. I I, I, I mean, like two good two minute drills from Kenny Pickett. I'm like, all right, maybe he's not horrible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, he, he, he's a gamer. He's, you know what? He's, he's a gritty. gamer. He's gritty. He's he gamer. wants to win all those good things. And that's that's why he's going to be the Steelers quarterback for the next 12 years. Uh, uh, but is, is he going to be good? No, no, he's not. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter in Pittsburgh. Though. It actually it's does like not matter. A, How do the Steelers, the Steelers win nine and eight? I mean, Mike Tomlin has got to be the sense. most. He's the most underrated make, coach in NFL history. For sure. It, Mike Tomlin's an incredible coach. Look, uh, the, the the quarterback play obviously does not matter to Mike Tomlin, no. and he's going to stick with this kid forever. <laughs> he's uh, not Raider? good, though. No, no he's, he's not good. He's, I don't think he's good. I mean, if we, we this has been – it wouldn't be the first time, like, a guy just doesn't look good as a rookie, 
and then they do become good. But I don't think Kenny Pickett has the physical tools to uh, like even Josh Allen, like at least like, I, I mean, I gave up on Josh Allen quite early <laughs> in his career, but even he, you know, at least had like the jaw dropping physical tools. Kenny Pickett does not have that so no. have to get by on being a gamer, which but is he's pretty- also like, he is, he needs to escape the pocket. He's not all that great within structure. It's like the same sort of Josh Allen thing, but what it, it's like low upside Josh Allen. Like you're not getting, it's like, we got to roll him out and do all the stuff to like have him hit the yeah. Johnson for five it, yards. It, it's not exactly analytics, but I will say that he, Kenny Pickett is in the rare, rarefied air of quarterbacks who, when you see him step into a throw, you know, it's going to be an interception. <laughs> it's true. It is true. It is true. That's what I love. My beloved Baker Mayfield metric. That yeah. I, yeah. That, uh, yeah. But that, he's, he's uh, that, that's the Mayfield metric when, when Mayfield. he's in a clean pocket and he's confident and he sneaks in you're like oh that's a pick like, <laughs> there's, 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 there's no way. it's no like way the classic it. when you saw Aaron Rodgers in his prime step into throw you're like oh man God, yeah it's really over big, yeah 70 yeah, yard yeah, touchdown yeah. baker mayfield in cleveland i learned very early on oh he's stepping in and throws probably going to easily land in a safety's arms <laughs> all the time uh two more las vegas who's going to have a better record next year las vegas raiders or denver broncos uh raiders i think it's the broncos i'm gonna, I'm gonna go broncos yeah no, i mean, for bet on that defense the raiders defense is not good i think the that. broncos three to four year window is very grim i think their one to two year window is probably could be a quick turnaround and could definitely make the playoffs at least one of the next two years you can't lose that many for if they trade for sean payton and get rid of another first round pick they're basically screwed for like 2026 but 2023, 2024, maybe they could get something. Well, going. here's Denny's floated a couple of conspiracy theories. Here's one. Aaron Rodgers does his whole, you know, this jersey. I'm definitely holding on to it. You know, everything. I don't know. Just thinking through it. Because he wants those calls coming his way if there's any good opportunities, not Derek Carr's way. And I feel like it's been quiet. What Derek Carr's obviously not gonna be back. Where's he going? Colts. I mean, I think everyone just knows he's going to the Colts. I'm just that's a joke, but I mean, I'm just it would be the most Colts move. Ian Harditz, friend of the show, friend of the website, former employee of the website, has already several times tweeted a Photoshop of Derek Carr, <laughs> Derek Carr in a Colts uniform because it would be so. so cool. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah, there's no doubt about okay. it. Um, actually, he's probably gonna be the Panthers. David Tepper, like someone shows him like two or three analytics that he was actually a lot better. Then he looked last year. Mm-hmm. Derek Carr is going to turn this team around. It's like, all right, two more second round picks. And, uh, <laughs> trades in and they go seven and ten again. <laughs> the Los Angeles Rams or the New Orleans Saints? Who's more likely to bounce back in 2023? Oh, I guess the Rams just because yeah. they have Stafford and Cup. But I mean, the, the Saints are down bad, real bad. Like, uh, I. I they should blow it up and they won't. They actually they really really need to blow they, it up. They, They're they in salary really cap hell. Blow it up. I mean, blow it all up. Get rid yes. of everyone, uh, Kamara especially, uh, and Michael Thomas. And, you know, but yeah, no, they're not going to do it. And Dennis Allen, when asked to, today, "Are you? Do you have your job back?" He said, "Yeah." What? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like Dennis Allen might be pound for pound the worst coach in the NFL this year. He's not, he's not good. <laughs> And he was not good the first time. Some of those Taysom plays are pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Taysom forever. Why do I wear the mask? It's because of of Taysom Hill. Uh, The Rams, by the way, they got so much better. I feel like a good coach. Like it's like when you, when you get rid of all their good players, then it's like, all right. Like the Rams are so much better after everyone got hurt. It's because like, I think Sean McVay just got to go into like coach hands on coaching mode. Yeah. Right. They they love that stuff. They love yeah. that stuff so much. Like back to basics mode. They really need Sean McVay back. If they don't have Sean McVay back next year, the Rams are not bouncing back. Even remotely. also, who's left among like the Sean McVay proteges? I mean, they, every year yeah. they get like two yeah. or three guys poached. There's the like coverage dry. Yeah. It's dry. They it's gotta keep them. They gotta keep them. But he apparently wants to come work for a television company like the one we work for. He has not been linked to NBC, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that is not a rumor. That rumor does not exist because it's not true. But it seems like he, he wants to do that. And it seems like I want to end this show because it was very long. Um, 
kind of free form discussion today. It was a lot of fun. fun. R- really enjoyed Pat's explanation. I know best ball is not for everybody, but you should look into it if you're not played. Really, really loved the BBM3 explanation. And by the way, I'd be remiss if I did not get out here talking about the games on NBC this weekend. Uh, just a reminder, if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, to go download it now. The contests are free and easy to play. You have a shot to win thousands this weekend by predicting what will happen in the wild card round and the Premier League, including two shots. I guess in one two shots at $100,000 by guessing the outcome in our Sunday night seven contests between the chargers and Jags and the Ravens and Bengals. Check them out at NBC as you check out the entire playoff slate this weekend. So yeah, we got a, uh, we got millionaire Pat Corain. We got cardigan wearing Denny Carter. <laughs> uh, we got me. I don't even have AirPods yet. I actually do. I got some. You do. Christmas. You just won't wear yeah, them. Wow. I, don't I haven't worn them yet. Um, yeah, so, why not? When, I because I don't know it's I'm sure it's complicated. <laughs> <They're> the <easiest laughs> thing you've ever done, man. <laughs> this is some real PlayStation behavior. Yeah, Denny, you need to. You know, it's become a meme to go touch grass. You need to do the opposite. You need to go touch a PS5 controller. I will never touch a PS5 controller. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we will never take a week off. We'll never take a show off. Denny and I will be back in one day to preview the entire playoff field. Um, so for Patrick Corain. For Denny Carter, I'm Patrick Darty. Thank you for listening. We'll be back later. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.